let's start with the ideal liquid model so the behavior of an ideal liquid is represented by an equation of state which is which has a very simple form that is v is equal to constant that is the liquid is incompressible okay there are two additional hypotheses for this one lack of viscosity and the second constant specific heats okay so this these three assumptions or hypotheses are necessary for ideal liquid the most important one is that the fluid must be incompressible okay now we're going to derive some relations regarding the ideal liquid model and we're going to start with the internal energy or u the internal energy for the ideal liquid model is a function of temperature and volume so now this can be written as du equal to partial u by partial t at constant volume into dt plus partial u by partial v at constant temperature to tv we know that if the volume is equal to constant then dv is equal to zero so du is equal to partial u by partial t at constant volume into dt because this term has cancelled out okay if you recognize this term is equal to just this term is equal to cv cv as cv is defined as partial u by partial t at constant volume so we can write it as du is equal to cv to dt or in the case of ideal liquid we write it as du is equal to c l into dt specific heat of liquid this is an important relation which we are going to use again okay now we also know that du is equal to t d s minus p d v now this relation has been derived from simply writing the heat input is equal to u plus w and then we can write this as u is equal to q minus w and u or du is equal to dq minus dw 
you all know that dq is equal to dds so du is equal to t ds minus p d v which is the mechanical work so if we put du here as cl into dt we get cl into dt is equal to t ds minus p dv in the ideal liquid model we know that dv is equal to zero so we get cl into dt is equal to t ds this is another very important relation which we have derived and it means that for an ideal liquid an increase in temperature cannot be obtained by an isentropic compression why because if it is an isentropic process ds is equal to zero so if you put here ds is equal to zero then we get dt is equal to zero so this relation implies another very important thing which is the increase in temperature can only be obtained at the expense of an increase in entropy resulting from a thermal exchange or irreversibility that is whenever we increase the temperature we will also increase the entropy now if we go on to the definition of mechanical work we know that mechanical work let's write as L is equal to duration of P which is the pressure and to dV now we know that dV is always zero so in the case of ideal liquid no mechanical work can be obtained okay now we'll move on to derive the thermodynamic properties of the ideal liquid First, we start with the internal energy. Okay. The internal energy, as we have defined before, is U is equal to Q minus W, and the U is equal to DQ minus DW or du is equal to t ds minus p dv we know that dv is equal to zero and as we have defined above t ds t ds which we have defined here is equal to cl into dt so we are going to replace TDS here like we have done above so we write TU is equal to CL into DT this is the relation for the internal energy now we go on to derive the enthalpy relation 
enthalpy. Okay. The enthalpy is defined as dH is equal to d dS plus V dB. To know how we derive this relation, you can see the video on ideal gas. This is a general relation which we derived when we were deriving the relation for the ideal gas. So, we also know that TDS is equal to CL into DT. So, we are just going to replace the equation this here. DH is equal to CL into DT plus VDB. Or we can write H as the integral of from T0 to T CL into DT plus V into P minus P0. This is right when we integrate this equation. Now, let's go on to derive the relation for entropy. I'm going to use blue for this. Entropy. Entropy is the fundamental relation for entropy is ds cp into dt divided by t minus v alpha p into dp. We know that alpha p for ideal liquid is zero. So ds is equal to cp into dt divided by t. I will show that y alpha p for ideal liquid is zero after I derive this. So, the entropy can be written as S is equal to S0 plus integral of Cl, which is a function of temperature, into dt divided by T. We can solve this using the appropriate limits and this is the relation for entropy. The alpha p that we left behind is the isothermal, uh, sorry, isobaric expansion coefficient and it is defined as alpha p is equal to 1 by v partial v by partial t at constant pressure as dv is 0 for ideal liquid so alpha p is always 0 similarly we haven't used the isothermal compressibility the coefficient here but I will define it the isothermal compressibility coefficient which is denoted by KT is minus 1 by V partial V by partial P at constant temperature 
as here also we are using the partial v so kt is also is equal to zero in the case of ideal liquid so this brings us to the end of this video i hope you enjoy it thanks